Released in 1952, My Cousin Rachel is a gripping mystery film directed by Henry Koster. The story revolves around a young Englishman who plots revenge against his mysterious cousin Rachel, believing she murdered his guardian. But as he gets closer to Rachel, he finds himself falling under her spell. As the plot thickens, viewers are kept on the edge of their seats with unexpected twists and turns. Funny, shocking, and sad facts unravel throughout the movie, making it a captivating watch. Are there any lesser known facts or anecdotes about this movie that fascinate you? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Many viewers find themselves inspired or impacted by the themes explored in My Cousin Rachel. Do you have a personal story about how this movie has influenced your life? We would love to hear your stories and memories related to My Cousin Rachel in the comments below. Keep watching for more interesting insights and discussions. In 1952, a captivating film emerged, weaving a tale of love, suspicion, and betrayal against the backdrop of the English countryside. Adapted from a novel, this movie delves into the depths of human emotion, exploring themes of trust, deceit, jealousy, and obsession. Its portrayal of gender dynamics adds layers to the narrative, challenging traditional notions, and inviting viewers to ponder the intricacies of relationships. Despite its age, the movie remains relevant today, its universal themes continuing to captivate audiences worldwide. Its influence extends beyond the screen, inspiring subsequent works in literature, film, and television. From its haunting score to its stunning visuals, this classic continues to spark discussions about love, trust, and the complexities of human nature. In conclusion, this timeless film has left an enduring impression on cinema history thanks to its compelling storytelling and memorable characters. Its influence persists, making it a classic that continues to engage and provoke thought among viewers everywhere. In the early stages of planning, Richard Burton took on the role of Philip in this film with the anticipation of it being Greta Garbo's comeback vehicle. The project, under the direction of George Cukor, aimed to revive Garbo's career. Burton, considering Cukor as a prominent Hollywood director, was enthusiastic about working with him. However, negotiations with Garbo and Cukor collapsed, leading to a shift in the film's focus. Olivia de Havilland stepped into the leading role after her Oscar-winning success in The Heiress. Burton, who remained attached to the project, later expressed dissatisfaction with de Havilland's behavior. According to his posthumously published diaries, he found her impossibly arrogant after winning an Oscar. De Havilland insisted on exclusive above the title star billing and required everyone to address her as Miss De Havilland. Burton, disliking the film and the circumstances surrounding it, was consistently critical of De Havilland in interviews throughout his life. Notably, the initial contenders for the title role, Greta Garbo and Vivian Lee, had both portrayed Anna Karenina in earlier film adaptations. Meanwhile, David O. Selznick, known for producing Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, proposed Jennifer Jones for the lead. However, 20th Century Fox Studio head Daryl F. Zanuck dismissed the suggestion, citing the need for a non-American actress aged at least 40 for the role. Olivia de Havilland, three years younger than the specified age, ultimately secured the part. These intricacies in casting decisions and behind-the-scenes dynamics added layers to the production of the film, shaping its course in unexpected ways. In the plans to have George Cukor direct and Greta Garbo star, she would have been retained with the director responsible for her most iconic role in Camille and also her notorious flop Two-Faced Woman. The debut of actress Audrey Dalton occurred in the same movie. In April 1952, Harrison Carroll reported that Bette Davis was eager for the role of Rachel. However, there's no evidence of any studio interest in casting Davis. Despite being only three years younger than early front-runner Greta Garbo, Davis had never been a screen siren, with the title role in The Old Maid being fairly typical of her upcoming roles. The film's original director, George Cukor, approached Vivian Lee for the lead role, but she agreed only if the movie was shot in England. However, studio head Daryl F. Zanuck insisted on Hollywood. Olivia de Havilland, aged 36, was nine years older than her co-star Richard Burton, who was 27 at the time. Author Daphne du Maurier based the character Nicholas Kendall on her memories of actor Ronald Squire, who had a connection with her family. Nunnally Johnson, informed of this connection, cast Squire as Kendall in the film adaptation of the novel. Nunnally Johnson, the director of the film, pursued Greta Garbo for the lead role, reaching out to her with a preview of the Daphne du Maurier source novel. Despite initial interest, Garbo ultimately declined the opportunity, citing a lack of courage to make another film. She conveyed later to Richard Burton that she would have accepted the role had she known of his commendable performance. 
However, Garbo's refusal led to Richard Burton taking on the role, earning a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nomination. In an intriguing twist, Burton's screen time in My Cousin Rachel exceeded that of any of his six nominations for Best Actor. Despite being recognized in the supporting category, his presence in the film surpassed the duration of his lead roles in other acclaimed works. The film includes a financial subplot as well. Philip's decision to allocate a £5,000 yearly allowance to Rachel, as directed to his lawyer, holds significance. This amount, equivalent to £406,000 in 2015, emphasizes the financial dimension within the narrative. These facets contribute to the nuanced and layered storytelling within My Cousin Rachel, bringing together the complexities of casting choices, performance duration, and financial intricacies. Isn't it interesting how actors and actresses sometimes compete for roles in movies? One example is when Joan Fontaine wanted to star in a film called My Cousin Rachel. She had previously acted in a famous movie called Rebecca, which was directed by Alfred Hitchcock. But in My Cousin Rachel, her sister, Olivia de Havilland, got the role instead. There's another interesting story about Richard Burton, who was quite young when he acted in a movie. Even though he was only 26, some people thought he looked too old for his character. Critics didn't think he was the right choice. Joan Fontaine talked about how it can be tough for actresses to find strong roles in movies. She acknowledged that things were changing in the movie industry. So, it's fascinating to see how actors and actresses navigate the world of film, isn't it? Did you know there are some interesting connections related to a certain film? One of the actresses had a sister with a similar name to a college mentioned in the movie. Also, there was a radio adaptation of the film where the same actress played her role again. In another movie, an actress portrayed the same person as in the original film. These connections help us understand more about the background of the movie and how it influenced other projects. Richard Burton's debut in Hollywood cinema, My Cousin Rachel, marked his first foray into the world of American filmmaking. In this adaptation, he delivered a compelling performance that earned him a nomination for Best Supporting Actor, a notable achievement considering his subsequent nominations in the Best Actor category. This film remains a significant milestone in Burton's illustrious career, showcasing his early talent on the international stage. Despite being his first Hollywood venture, Burton's portrayal in My Cousin Rachel demonstrated his potential to captivate audiences with his nuanced acting. Throughout the film, he exhibited the depth and skill that would define his later roles, laying the groundwork for his acclaimed performances in the years to come. Despite its age, My Cousin Rachel continues to stand as a testament to Burton's talent and versatility as an actor. In the 1952 film adaptation of a novel, a surprising fact emerges regarding the fate of a key character. Despite the perception of the character's death, it is revealed later that she may have been wrongly accused, leaving viewers in a state of shock and ambiguity. The storyline revolves around a young man who inherits a vast estate in Cornwall following the mysterious death of his cousin Rachel. He becomes entangled in a complex web of emotions and suspicions as he grapples with his feelings towards her. Throughout the narrative, the audience is kept on edge as they try to decipher Rachel's true intentions and whether she is indeed the manipulative figure some characters believe her to be. The film's tragic undertones are amplified by the portrayal of love, betrayal, and ultimately, the devastating consequences of misunderstanding and miscommunication. In the end, the ambiguity surrounding Rachel's character leaves a lingering sense of melancholy highlighting the complexity of human relationships and the unforeseen consequences of our actions. 